Greetings, fellow gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the horror guru, and today I'm going to talk about a little movie called Uncle Peckerhead, which is a splatterpunk movie that was released earlier this year. Now, when I say splatterpunk movie, I don't just mean it's a movie about punks in which a whole bunch of blood gets splattered, though that totally does happen in this movie for the record. But I mean that it also falls 100% within the literary subgenre of splatterpunk, which was popular in the mid 80s to late 90s, give or take a few years. We're talking books like The Scream or The Light at the End, stuff like that. So naturally, someone making a movie within that subgenre in this, our current year 2020, that caught my attention and I had to see for myself if it lives up to any of its forebearers. And honestly, despite this movie being really low budget and as a result of that being pretty rough around the edges, like we're talking some wonky editing and like some sound balancing that definitely could have used another pass and like acting that could have totally have been in like a trauma movie. This movie is actually really fucking fun and totally captures the spirit of those books. But with this like weird added detail of being like oddly wholesome which is totally not a word I would use to describe any other piece of spider punk work, but it totally applies here. And I'm honestly at a loss as to how to explain this wholesome detail to you, my fellow gorehounds, but I'm going to do my best to try. <laughs> it's like every character in this movie is written with this weird, naive, childlike whimsy. And I'm including the titular character, Uncle Peckerhead, in this equation, too. He also has this quality. And while at first glance you'd think this would make the characters really annoying, it actually makes them really endearing. Like, at least for me, I found myself watching the movie and rooting for the characters and hoping they would achieve their goals. Like, like almost like in like a fatherly way, like, you can do it, kids. Like, I believe in you. Despite every single one of them, and I must stress this, being adults. Anyway, to move on from the topic of this movie's wholesomeness, here is what Uncle Peckerhead is actually about. Basically, this movie is about a punk band that goes on its very first tour, but they take with them a brand new roadie named Uncle Peckerhead. But unfortunately for them, Uncle Peckerhead comes with this massive caveat that he uh, may or may not eat people on the side. And of course, by eat people, I mean he basically turns people into real life grindcore albums. Complete and total evisceration and of course, mutilation, which naturally daddy likes. And naturally, this is bad for the band because having a roadie that kills people at every show they go to means that there is now a trail of bodies that is following them to every single show. And where do you think those bodies are going to lead when people start investigating the murders? Where, who do you think is going to be fingered first? Do you think it's going to be the roadie or the rest of the band? Huh? I mean, think about it. Think about it. But oh no, to complicate things further, Uncle Peckerhead happens to be the best fucking roadie this band could ask for, and as a result of that, they start seeing way more success than they had seen before. So the question becomes, do they stop Uncle Peckerhead from eating people, or uh, do they keep riding along with the success that they're getting? Basically, it's a deal with the devil kind of situation, almost like a crossroads situation, um, just without the devil, and instead having Uncle Peckerhead being this weird thing. They don't actually describe what he is. They just call it a thing. It's like a weird ghoul thing. I don't I don't know what you call it. And uh, that's that's what this movie's about. And uh, if that interests you, then I recommend checking it out because this movie is fucking fun. I mean, sure, it's rough around the edges and its characters are incredibly childlike. But if you look past that, the movie is also really fucking funny. There are many times throughout this movie in which I laughed out loud, in particular during one sex scene that, that fucking got me. There's a sex scene in this movie that had me rolling on the goddamn floor. But there are other scenes, too. And on top of that, it's actually pretty gory. Like, it's not like Dead Alive or anything. But when the scenes do happen, when the gore scenes happen, the blood splatters everywhere. Which, again, is the way Daddy likes it. And on top of all that, this movie actually has a pretty rockin' soundtrack. The band in this movie basically sounds like a thrashier Green Day, but with a lady backup vocalist, and I was here for it. In fact, by the end of this movie, I found myself wondering if they have an official soundtrack, because if they do, I totally want one. Anyway, if you enjoy yourself movies with rockin' soundtracks, if you enjoy yourself movies with a whole lot of blood splatter and a whole lot of juvenile humor, if you enjoy yourself trauma movies, if you enjoy yourself splatterpunk, then I highly recommend Uncle Peckerhead. This is a movie that's gonna charm you as it goes on, even if you think at first you're not gonna like it. 
And with that, I'll include an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. And if you click that link and buy or rent the movie with that link, I will get a kickback from it. And with all that out of the way, let us finally move on to the spoilers. All right, so just to remind you, since I get some people yelling at me about this from time to time, we are currently in the spoiler section. If you do not want the movie spoiled for you, stop right here, go watch the movie, and then come back and finish this section. Uh, from here on, it's on you if you keep watching. Okay? All right. So as I alluded to earlier, this movie is about more than just poop jokes and blood splatter, although it is about those things too, don't get me wrong. This movie is also about being an artist and reaching the proverbial crossroads where you can either keep going the path you're going despite all the barriers in the way on that path, or you can take the promised shortcut, the one that comes with all the riches immediately. But you know, if it goes wrong, it's going to go really wrong. You're going to like, you know, lose your soul or something. <laughs> I'm speaking metaphorically, of course, as what happens in this movie is what I said earlier. You have this band and they get this really awesome roadie and they start seeing more success. But there comes a point in which they have to choose continue with this success or, you know, get rid of the roadie that's fucking eating people. <laughs> oh, it's a tough call, I know. And this movie does something interesting with that, because from the get-go, this band is not on board with the killing, and they don't want the roadie to do that, like, just period. So they end up striking this deal with the roadie, in which he will basically drug himself every night, because there's these really weird rules in the movie in which he will turn into this weird ghoul monster, this weird thing, as he describes it, at midnight, but only for 13 minutes. Which is some weird-ass gremlins don't feed him after midnight shit, I swear. So they strike a deal with him in which he gets really fucking wasted and high at midnight so that he will sleep through the actual monster turning process and therefore not eat people. And you astute viewers out there probably figured out that we wouldn't have a movie if that worked, so naturally, it doesn't work. Because it turns out he's been injecting himself with water the whole time, so he's been turning into a monster and eating people on the side. And this all comes to a head at the end of the movie in a very interesting and complicated way. Because basically, this entire movie has been building up to this final show in which the band is going to play in front of this really popular band. And this popular band within it has a uh, member that owns a record label. So if they do well, they might get a record deal. But over the course of the film, they've formed this rivalry with this other band. And that other band wants this same shot. So the other band ends up trying to tie them up and stopping them from going to the final show. And the only reason they're safe from this situation, because it happens at midnight, is because Uncle Peckerhead shows up and they find out he's been lying this whole time, but he saves them. He saves them and eats the other band. So at first you're like, oh, this deal with the devil, it's actually going to work out after all. But unfortunately, by the end of the movie, the murders start to catch up to the band. And of course, like I alluded to earlier, the band is arrested right before they go on with the big band. And they have their careers fucking ruined by uh, Uncle Peckerhead's murders, which they are put up to trial for. And we actually see them go through like the trial towards the end of the movie in like this little montage fashion. And then by the end of it, come out of the trial acquitted. So they don't go to jail but their careers were definitely fucking ruined by the process. And to make things even worse, it's very clear that the band that they're playing for, that band liked them and wanted them to play before Uncle Peckerhead was their roadie and was pushing them hard. They had heard one of their, um, one of their, their demos way early on and were like advocating for that band. So they would have had that chance they would have had that success regardless of Uncle Peckerhead. And it's because of Uncle Peckerhead they end up getting screwed in the end. <laughs> anyway, I know this spoiler section didn't really have much to add to my previous section, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the ending of the movie and how much I really liked the way it all comes together. I like this whole like, oh, look, they, they would have had the success either way, but because they took this deal, they actually screwed over the success instead of, you know, 
instead of actually insuring it. And they would have had it either way. I love that. That That's a really cool little um, direction to go with this. Because usually the deal with the devils don't have that. Usually it's like, if you don't take this, this is your only choice. So you end up feeling really bad for the bands at the end because, yeah, sure, they sold their soul and it turned out really poorly. But it was the only way they were going to get, get success because everything else sucked. In this case, they would have had another path had they just been patient. And I thought that was really cool. Um, so uh, with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you'd like to help out my channel more directly, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. And with all that said, my fellow Gorehounds, I got some Blood Splattered Cinema episodes to record because it's the spooky season and I finally finished most of my scripts that I was working on. So, uh, catch you in those, uh, soon enough. And, uh, with that said, peace out and I'll catch y'all later.